Welcome to Carside Reviews. I'm Adam. This is my buddy Chase. We just got out of Midway. We're going to give you our thoughts. Is it better than Pearl Harbor? Stick around to find out. That's doing a lot of autofocusing, isn't it? I don't think it's that bad. I don't notice it. I mean, people watch these videos on their watches now, so cinema's dead, and so is <laughs> any sort of video quality. Cinema. Uh, Chase, on a scale from 0 to 10, 0 being no interest and 10 being a whole bunch of interest, what were you at going into Midway? Um, probably a 2 or 3. It was a long walk to get to this basic yeah. question. I was, a, I was about at a 2 or 3 also. Yeah. In fact... I probably wouldn't have even saw this film had I not got pre-screeners. That doesn't mean I'm going to rate it higher because I didn't have to pay cash money for it. I also got a Coke, and that ran $7.50 at AMC, which is highway robbery. So I basically paid for a ticket anyways. I hate Pearl Harbor, the event, and the movie equally. And this film was better than both. <laughs> it, it redeemed it. It was better, it than, it. It was better than both yeah, events. Yeah. I think the best part about this screener was that half of the audience was actually vets. And there was one in Minnesota here that was actually in Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that was really cool. That was awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure to them, and I've said this before in war movie reviews, that you know, there, there's certain types of movies that are going to impact people in certain ways. For instance... Saving Private Ryan, fantastic movie on its own. Mm. But if you were actually in that war, I mean, I couldn't even imagine the intensity that would that would be for, for someone like that. Um, so me just seeing Midway, I don't know the ships that are flying. I don't know the, the different, you know, branches of government mm -hmm. and the officers right. and everything going on. So I was just taking it from uh, simply an entertainment aspect, and it was fine. It was It was entertaining. It was entertaining. I mean, it got it got going right away. We're off to the races We're in like this thing. Eight minutes in, probably, and it just started going. I so. think, you know that that was good and bad. This is a Roland Emmerich joint, <laughs> a Roland Emmerich production. He did Independence Day, still his best movie to date. He did you know Day After Tomorrow, Twenty Twelve, all those disaster type mm -hmm. movies, and Roland Emmerich, you know he he's got two things that are in all of his movies destroying landmarks and telling the story from the perspective of 75 different people it which no sense some of some of the characters in this they shouldn't even be characters they shouldn't necessarily no. even be in the movie i understand like the the military officers and the everybody else like i get that but like there's characters in it that i just i don't know why like why is his wife in there you know? i don't know well i mean it's mandy moore so yeah. i was okay with it because she's she's just a treasure more she's mandy a peach. Moore. there's some big names in there though like you pointed out that i mean they're, like, they're in it like weirdly. for four minutes mm -hmm. and they're out woody harrelson i think he was kind of you know he promoted all over this yeah. and he's not in it that much dennis quaid was promoted quite a bit i thought and same with aaron eckhart <sighs> dennis too. quaid yeah that's kind of roland's go-to actor he's been in a few of his movies i think you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to, you know, factually state that with no backup other yep, than he was absolutely. in 2012. It's his go-to guy. They're, they're best Not friends. Not 2012. He was oh, in, yeah, yeah, day after yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah day after tomorrow. So I'm just completely off on everything. He was fine. Everybody, th this is like just a, so, just a harsh fine across yeah. the board for this movie. Uh, historically... I can't speak to that. Mm -hmm. Roland Emmerich is not the best when it comes to um, accuracy in mm -hmm. his films. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually see the BC one he did. BC? He did 20 something BC oh, or 10, what? 10,000 BC. 10,000 BC, yeah. I saw that. That was actually, it was decent. Really? Was, yeah. Because I mean, he got raked under the part. coals by reviewers really? years ago and I was just like, no, I'm out. It I, came I out got... so long. I was like Connor's age though. I was a little kid. So, so. yeah. It's not as good as Dark Fate. <laughs> 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 Which you didn't see. Not yet, but I already know. Yeah, I, uh, people were calling me, a, my, my Terminator Dark Fate review is just, just phenomenal in the comments. <laughs> people are just awesome. You know, I finally see a movie that I, I wasn't disappointed with, that I was entertained <laughs> by, and I had fun. It was like the definition of a popcorn flick. Getting back on track, though, this follows a, th a three-part structure, I mm -hmm. guess, kind of. You know, you, you have the beginning Pearl Harbor attack. Which, I kind of went off on a tangent before, mm -hmm. I think, finishing a thought earlier. Because you said this movie speeds in right away, yeah, it gets yeah. going. And, and I was I was working up to a point which I never actually got mm -hmm. to because that's just how I yeah, am yeah. if I don't have any sort of focus. Yeah. But what I was trying to get to was this 
does move quickly, but it also doesn't really breathe much. And because there are 30 different story arcs going on, nothing ever really hits very hard. Everything feels like afterthoughts, just kind of puzzled together. You said that it follows a three-part. Yeah. I almost argue that it follows a four-part. Well, I'm, 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 it, I'm, I'm right. like saying it, but arguing right. in my head yeah. that it, it's trying to. Well, because it, it has like, it has two different endings. Yeah. It does. Like, the movie, it went on for another half hour, 40 minutes, probably. Maybe not that long. 20 minutes. Because movies, Roland's movies are yeah. always too long. You you said to yeah. me, you're like, I think it's an hour, 45, two hours, and I just kind of laughed. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know how to hit that no, mark. It was a two hour and 20 minute movie. Yeah. I It would have been fine two hours, 50. Ever. Two hours, 50? Sorry, two hours. One hour, 50. <laughs> One hour, 50. My bad. But there's a huge battle sequence. There's submarines going on. There's dive bombing going on. And then the movie continues to another battle after I assume everybody in the audience thought this was it. Because it's a it's a pretty epic scene. But by that point, you're almost so numb by all of it. You are, yeah. Just, oh, cool. He's dive bombing. I mean, he'll he'll make it. The, okay, effects, cool. the effects aren't bad. They just, they, it does feel like kind They're, of video game cutscenes. Yeah. There's a lot of the, you know, the orange bullets everywhere. It's just, it's just nonstop. They're it reminds me of the old, you know, I mean, James Bond video games. You know, Dunkirk jumped to mind because, you know, Christopher Nolan's all about the practical effects and making things look so real. And Dunkirk did such a good job of, of putting you in the boots down there and, and making you feel like you were living through that. Where this just, it just feels like you're watching these video game mm -hmm. moments and, uh, it looks cool. There's there's some cool effects going on. I just I, I wouldn't see this in theaters. This is one I would say is it's a stream. It's worth a stream. Yeah. Real late. If you have nothing better going on, it's one of those ones that oh, is there nothing else on? I need to go to bed. I'll just flip that on. I, I mean, that's exactly yeah. what I just said.